All right, well, thanks, Mike, for joining us today as we're checking out the platinum top-of-the-line F-150 Lightning. I've heard so much about this, but I've never gotten to sit in one, and now we get to drive it. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. Oh, yeah. And you've got rain protection, too. <laughs> a little more that's a charger i'm guessing maybe a bed oh, outlet it, it, it's a converter oh there's a plug like that in the back i think i think it's back feeding maybe that's oh what it is. vehicle to home yeah you know they were one of the first ones that's that's right. Right. boy look that's at the plugs outlet. man they're not kidding around does that open up <laughs> i think it does but it's not meant to be opened a lot but look at that 1913 the who's original. that henry ford yeah. Writing some little thing. Yeah, that's his little his first car. <laughs> wow. That's a nice little attention to no, detail. No, it is. <laughs> oh, look, look at how easy the 12 volt batteries are. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's right there. Whoa. It's pretty small. Yeah, it's, it's just small. like a, it's a cube. It's right there. Actually, all electric car companies should take a look. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's terrific. Yeah, that's just a little handle icon. So if you trap a kid in here, they can push it when you're flying down the freeway at 70 <laughs> miles an hour and completely cover your vision. But they go, you're right. <laughs> well, that'll slow you down. Yeah, it's not a good uh, aerodynamic decision. It's a very Ford sound. It closes. Kind of slow, but... Oh, man. Oh, wow. Look at all the little details yeah. they put. You got your ruler <laughs> baked right into the tail. I think it's pretty tough. Line. That's like a gradient liner. Yeah. Lots of outlets back here. So that's for that adapter for power out. So we could power the house. Two more 120s. Two more 120s. Man, there is a lot. And lights. Yeah, what is that? This is the step. Whoa. Oh, my God. This must be the... Oh. <laughs> There's a lot baked into this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty neat. So there's a button there. Push on that. There's a button there. Wow. <laughs> a lot of mechanics. Yeah, for that. there's a lot I of I think I could parts. get up there easier than yeah. Oh. You can't do that on a side of truck. That's for your trailer, and then this is another four. This does. Nothing. <laughs> That's your torpedo exhaust. Wow. Oh my gosh. I sure like the <laughs> way you get in. Yeah, well, we got our handles. Yeah, this, this is what the Rubium didn't have. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty neat. What are your first impressions on this interior? We've got a lot more buttons than we're used to, but I will confess this steering wheel's big and beefy compared to the Rivian, and I can see the full driver display. Yeah, yeah. Which they, I think they is kind of smart. mixed, have a little trouble getting away from their ice roots here. Yeah, sure. but, they're trying to be familiar. I think. I think they have fewer buttons than they might in a maxed out ice vehicle, though. That's true. We've got a big old portrait mode screen here. Just There's something it. to be said for things being familiar. It actually has CarPlay, unlike all the other electric yeah. trucks. I think Ford might be the last one holding out. GM's scrapping it. Tesla, Rivian don't want to do it. If you want a CarPlay in your truck, <laughs> this is the I guess truck. This is it. It's just noticing how intricate the design is on these seats. They're perforated and they got all these different layers and pads to them. That looks like a wireless charger. Well, it's quiet. It's supposed to be started. And we're currently at 270 miles of range, so they charge it up pretty high, but it's not 100%. Unlike the Rivian, it actually charges when you put it on there. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah, might roll around a little bit, but... No, I don't think so. Feel it. Oh, it's pretty grippy, huh? Oh, yeah. But only one phone. Our car can do... Two phones. Two phones. <laughs> yeah. That's the big difference. This is something that I think a lot of Ford customers are used to, the gear shifter down here. I'm personally more in favor of controls up here and then my cup holder my phone my my drinks you know everything else goes down well, here there's a use of space uh question about this too look at how elaborate this is yeah and I know, i've heard of this button so if you don't want this thing sticking up you just yeah and it'll just pop down look at it <laughs> then you <laughs> can put your drinks parts. on it and it can spill in the well <laughs> <laughs> you can spill it everywhere. <laughs> and this opens up, I believe. Wow. We've got a nice big table here. That's perfect for eating lunch. I could put my laptop there and charge it off the Type-C. Yeah. yeah, it's funny, we have the pro trailer dial. Yeah. Wondering why that needs a, 
a button. Well, I'm accessing it all the time. Well, that's a good point. But if you need that, you're not a pro. That's true. <laughs> bro, the pros just you back up it yourself. Well, let's see what backing up is like. I guess we're gonna. Okay. We can't go forward. <laughs> At least we shouldn't. What do I do? press this again? Yeah, yeah to get bring your it handle up. back here. <laughs> that feels very like needy. I'm, it's gonna break after a few miles. The, like, oh, the going down thing. Just that slope. Okay, so we got our bird's eye view here. Oh, oh here's good. our controls. I don't need my No, me either. Oh, wow. Seated. That's, I'm cooking over here. <laughs> the steering wheel's heated. That's kind of nice. Maybe we'll put cool on. So I'm in reverse, and oh, it's not one pedal driving. <laughs> it's rolling away. Did you hear that? Something's What is up. that? Those are the seats, I think. Girl. It sounds like a jet engine. Oh, one pedal drive. I'm turning that on immediately. Oh, was it off? Yeah. Oh. Locking differential and propulsion sound. I'm going to turn that off. <laughs> that Just... was, that's, we got to turn that on at some point. Okay. Now I'm back in one pedal, so it doesn't roll away when I take my foot off the brake. I think it's uh, telling. Dealership leaves the one pedal driving off. Yeah. Well, I think maybe for a product like this where you're kind of a sleeper EV, like no one's going to look at it and know that's true that it's an electric vehicle. But it, oh, Ooh, it picks up. It still good. picks up. Oh, yeah. Very quiet. Wow. I will say the headliner eats into my visibility a bit. It's not the most clear view of whatever's in front of me. Well, I think your seat's up real high. Drop that it too. Just drop it a little. But bit. I'm already feeling closed off from the bottom. I could just be used now, to my. Now I think that's an interesting comment you're making because I think it, the windshield is bigger than the Rivian and has better vision than the Rivian. Person. Really? Yeah. I interesting. Do. Uh, you've of... driven it more than I have. <laughs> yeah, lowering it helps a little, yeah. but I, I still feel like we're we're deep below this hood, so I don't want to get too low. But I love the way it picks up. I've driven my grandma's gas F-150 a lot, and size-wise it does feel very familiar, but I feel like there's just a lot of interior busyness up here. We've got the big screen up here. I've got a much bigger steering wheel. I agree. I was... Oh, do we have 12 volts up here? Yeah. Sure For the yeah. passenger. You get a full outlet just for you. <laughs> Should we launch it? Okay. All right. We're Drew not going to go to launching. 60. This is something to <laughs> really note. I, I think this is a home link built into the sun visor. Yeah. Which that's is kind of neat. neat. These guys have been building cars a long time. That's they, true. They know how to put them together so everything is there. <gasps> oh, Drew, Drew. Drew, that really. Not as well, fast. Not as fast. Not, not as fast as today. No, it's not. But you can tell there's more mass being moved. Uh, yeah. I don't well, know. The not weight that... might be pretty close. Oh, then our well, car. I'm talking about our car, not the river. Oh, yeah, then the Model 3. It's interesting that they have this little Blue Cruise camera sensor. I think that's for eye tracking. A special, they have a special little thing for everything, don't they? Right. What is that, the glove box? Yeah, it's the glove box, but it won't open, so it must be on that button. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's two. There's one underneath. Oh, yeah. I like that. Whoa. This thing is glove boxed up. Double the glove boxes, wow. Tesla should take note. I think this over here is another eye tracking thing. Yeah. Ooh, that did not feel I'll tell you, Drew, when I pushed it. One thing I notice about this, the material on this little glove box, for example, does not match the rest of the Ford. Well, that's interesting, because I was just thinking that about this. I just touched it. I said, I think this is like an eye tracking device. And the second I pushed it, I heard the loudest crackle. And this is the Platinum. They're charging 90000 for this. That's right. With, and then after some rebates, maybe it's and closer look, to look 80. But, right. I don't think uh, Ford might be your best bet for luxury, but I'm sure there's much, much cheaper variants of this truck that yeah, do that, yeah, that's right. very similar functionality. I find the cheaper variants more attractive because mm -hmm. the way I use a pickup, I wouldn't buy an electric pickup now sure and i'll tell you exactly why it has to do just with towing you need a truck to tow that's one of the weaker points on evs is the range and then the trailer throws all that off well my diesel truck gets 21 miles per gallon unloaded it has a 36 gallon tank that's a lot of range sure it goes sure. down to 14 if you put 10,000 pounds on it yeah <laughs> and that's the point evs and ice vehicles towing cuts your mileage down dramatically it does in either vehicle and it's just much cheaper and much easier to stuff a bunch of gas in a truck than it will be to stuff a 250 kilowatt hour battery in an electric that's truck right. which it is may what add we much need. faster too yeah <laughs> and we're two guys who love evs right yeah this one 
being close to a full charge and getting 260 miles of range, which is about what our Model 3s get. Yeah, and this yeah. has, I think, more than double the battery pack. I'm sure it does. Is quite telling. I mean, I don't think Ford was aiming for that, though. I was just looking over at the fact they still have a analog antenna. <laughs> you see? If you want to talk about aerodynamics and efficiency, that is, <laughs> that's been gone on so many other products for a long time, and yet they still have one here. It's I'll point out thing. another thing, door handles. Yeah. They got so, the door handles hanging out there an inch, four door handles. That's true. They stick out quite a bit. They're getting the full range of <laughs> obstruction. But I get it. I mean, they having flush door handles wouldn't make a lot of difference in mileage in this truck. No. Well, I guess the, the bigger the truck is, the higher it is off the ground, the less that's yeah. going to make a difference. Oh, every year it feels like with these F-150s, the beds get a little smaller and the cabs get a little bigger. Well, I think a lot of people just like them as a very spacious comfortable cabin which we can argue whether they should or not with how much more efficient other vehicles can be but this is very quiet it's very compliant ride it really feels good very smooth you're really up here i agree this is somebody buying a car they want the convenience of a truck you know that's yeah. what it is but they pay for it too right <laughs> they're paying a premium whether you pay for it in gas or you pay in it in a big battery pack well, in California, DMV fees play a part of that. Too. That too. Especially with the truck, with oh, the weight yeah. fees. Um, right. Let's put it this way, Drew. If you wreck it, you're probably going to be making payments for another 40 years. <laughs> as much as it's easy for me to complain about Americans don't need trucks this big and it's too inefficient or whatever, I will confess F-150 has been best-selling vehicle for decades now and a great way to introduce a lot of car buyers to electric vehicles is very much Let's just give them exactly what they're used to, but it just so happens to be electric. We're not gonna scream in your face that it's electric and change every little thing like the door handles and the interior and the screen. Let's make it as familiar as we possibly can, but then introduce at the last second, like, oh, but also it's a lot quieter. There's not an engine. You don't get that vibration. It's a very low center of gravity. When we're coming into these turns, you don't feel as much of that yeah, sway that you may feel in a combustion engine yeah. truck. The home charging concept, you plug it in. I don't think a lot of people are even taking F-150s on road trips. A lot of the time it's the, it's the work vehicle I'm driving around town and then they take the family minivan or SUV on the road trip. So it may not be the best road tripper with CCS and the slower charging. This one maxes out, I think around 150 kilowatts, which yeah. is slower than our cars. Yeah, that's, that's dreadfully slow for a truck <laughs> like this. I think like this truck, uh, CCS, they'll have NAX very soon. I think they're gonna be one of the yeah. first, right? They jumped on the NAX bandwagon before all else and I gotta give them credit. I, I think that too. was the domino that brought the rest of the industry along with them. But this particular unit has CCS and you're Correct. gonna be dealing with an adapter for its whole life. Yeah. And I'm learning, I don't want to deal with anything. I like what Tesla does. <laughs> you pull up, you plug it in, it starts. Right. <laughs> That's End how it story. should be. I'm hoping it gets to that point. I don't know if you saw, but the Magic Docs. Oh, yeah. You can now access without the app. Oh, really? I didn't uh, know that. That's new to they, me. Now you can just hold down the button on the cable for two seconds, and then it releases the Magic Dock, which I believe is the eventual plan to bring plug-in charge to a vehicle like this. Just like you said, we need to get to a point where you just pull in, plug in, and everything else is taken care of. We don't, we shouldn't have to download some app, set up some account, and fuss around with internet, or which account is plugged in, or what have well, you. Well, and some of these stations are real curious. Up in Northern California, we were at a Tesla internet. There was no internet service, so. Yeah, <laughs> good luck activating yeah, the charger. Yeah, see if you can, yeah, activate a charger with no service. AT&T folks had no service this week, and that's right, yeah. yeah the, grid, so, the internet goes down and suddenly you can't <laughs> charge your car. That's well, a problem. Well, let's face it, every time you put a layer of technology on something you want to do, the chances of you not being able to do it increase. I've seen a lot of F-150 Lightning sitting on dealer lots for a yeah. while. And a lot of people, I think naturally, a lot of Ford customers are used to their gas trucks, so they don't want to switch away from them. But you know who's going to sell a lot more of these Lightnings this year, maybe than Ford? It's just Tesla opening up the supercharger network and making those magic docks more accessible. That's, that will absolutely do it. I think that's a deal maker for a ton of these trucks. A lot of the resistance we see in the market right now has to do with charging 
and the Absolutely. ability to get to chargers. Yeah. And that gives Tesla a little boost right now. You know, the promise that it'll be here in a month, no one believes these promises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, Tesla can do everything they can to make that magic dock more accessible, open up NACs for everybody. But at the end of the day, that charge port is still on this side. And that's going to be a headache at a lot of those superchargers. That's going to be a headache. Because they're not optimized. The cables aren't long enough for you to pull in the right way. So you're either going to take up two stalls or be parking in some weird, awkward manner. And knowing how many people use these trucks just for work and for getting stuff done. Similar to you, they're just going to be like, I don't want to mess around with all that. Don't make me have to figure out how to park just to charge it. You know, when we were at the V4, I was uh, fascinated by all the comments that said, why didn't you just use the other side? Right. <laughs> <laughs> didn't matter what you say. People kept coming. <laughs> it made perfect sense, of course, but it didn't make perfect sense for their parking, did it? It's true that in that exact isolated scenario, it would work. It would be, the cable would be long enough to charge your car. But the point was it would occupy two spaces. It would. Causes all kinds of problems because the software on the Tesla end will say, hey, there's a stall available. In reality, there's only a stall available for another Rivian, not another Tesla. Confuses everything. So. And if it's a single stall, believe me, there'll be a frustrated person. Oh yeah, absolutely. If it says the charger's not full, and it technically is, yeah, that's gonna tick people yeah. off. Not to sure. mention the fact that there is no standard configuration among chargers. No, they, they, they put keep them in putting different them in ways. Weird... I can't even figure out how to use some of them. They... <laughs> well, what do you think of the comfort on these seats since we've been driving around? Yeah, a little hard for me. Yeah, I, I would like something that I is a bit stiff. Do you but think that's a truck? That's thing? That's a truck thing. Because yeah. I noticed it in the Cybertruck as well. They're, yeah, they're kind of yeah. trucks in general tend to have these more flatter, less less cradled. I, I think it's very comfortable though. I'm yeah. not disappointed. That's kind of what I expected for a truck of this price point it's not bad i'd like to see a lo little more monochromatic decoration going sure on. i sure. don't like the two-tone seats and stuff but that's just yeah ford likes their two-tone i noticed that in the mach -E as well they i'd get real tired colors. of any of that i think the side seats are way squishier than the middle seat for wow. some reason it's that sticks out hard. a lot doesn't it but there's some nice cup holders here. Something I've Ooh. noticed is an immense amount of cup holders, which I love. That's and true. And storage pockets on Look the side that. doors. We've got two up here, two here. Two here. So it's got more cup holders each than door seats. Has one. Oh, two. and the doors. So two on each door also. Are they up here? Man, they're loaded up. Yeah, they're up here. Man, so you, you can, can have, have like 15 drinks. I think this interior feels very American to me. I have got leg room for days. It feels m much, much wider than even the Cybertruck. I feel like it didn't feel this spacious in the back. Yeah. This can move a <laughs> an American family around, you know. An American-sized family. Right. This is an American truck. Real controls, <gasps> but only... The left and right seats are heated, not the middle. Okay, my Model 3 still has some advantages. Yeah, the Model 3 has middle seats. Here. Not the new one. But, oh, is that right? <laughs> but our stuff. Down there, we have Type-C and Type-A, which I'm religiously against. And uh, 120, that's better. People just plug their laptops into that. Seat pockets, which are very... Clock. This has a lot of give to yeah, it. This See is a that? Lot looser than the three. The three Very feels loose. so tight, like you can barely put a piece of paper in there. There's a ton of padding here. Oh, look at this. That's from Blue Cruise, I believe. I don't know. The seats back here have a little blue tint to them. But interesting, the handles are here. I guess some people like that. Yeah, I like the skylight. It's very bright and airy. What are your thoughts on the truck, Louise? I actually, I like it better than the Cybertruck. <gasps> wow. Just like, Wife know, endorsement. The design, like you said, it's very American. It's very comfortable. I can mm -hmm. see myself road tripping in this. Yeah. Lots of That's storage. That's really nice. You better listen, Louise. Women may not be buying these, but I guarantee you they're influencing the purchase. Oh, yeah. No, it needs the, the wife true. approval. This has 80 miles on it, the one we're driving. Does it? And these, I already see kind of some creasing forming. Yeah. These are perforated. I don't think they're cool, but... Wow. Wait, let me stand up. Don't crush me though. Oh, okay. <gasps> Whoa. There she goes. I like this. Yeah? Yeah, it feels like you're in a limo. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Look at all that. Again, I love all the storage. You can fit a ton of stuff back here. Yeah, you could add another ton to this thing. <laughs> you could put a range extender in the back. Fill it with more batteries. These these move up along with it. Wonder if they've ever done that. Am I the first person to open that? That is a door. 
Look at, look at, there's like three layers of weather. Feeling. One, two, three. That's why it's so quiet. Boom. <laughs> that just sticks out. I don't know if that's on purpose. I think that is. Have you ever seen that before? <laughs> that's really cool. Wow. They thought of everything. much darker now. Sure is. It's a different feeling. Yeah. Uh, not too much to <laughs> Well, it sure does cruise. Yeah. That's a cruise control, this thing. So what does Blue Cruise do? Blue Cruise is supposed to be a system that just looks at my eyes with these two cameras, and then I don't have to keep my hands on the wheel. But is it lane keep, speed? Yeah, it's Control. all that. It keeps you in the lane and speeds up and slows down. It's their autopilot, essentially. But this one still yells at me when I keep my hands on the, off the wheel. So. Okay. Whoa! Okay, so not quite in the closest lane, but it turned fine. Yeah, that was perfect. It was pretty impressive for no four-wheel steering or anything. Would you say that's on par with your Rivian? Yes. I'd say that was better than our Model 3s. Yeah. Oh, did you hear the thing? Yeah, it revved. <laughs> <laughs> Those electron pistons were going up and down. <laughs> <laughs> we should buy some gas later. You gotta remember, Ford, if you try too hard to make it feel just like an F 150, people are gonna go to gas stations. They're gonna forget. <laughs> <laughs> because when you get that propulsion sound turned on, it sounds so much like. Did you hear the electric Dodge Charger? It's gonna have vibrations to make it feel like there's an engine inside. That's a good one. Put <laughs> vibrations into it. Maybe it could just spew out carbon monoxide. <laughs> Get the just, right smell. Yeah, to capture the essence of burning fuel. Burning rubber. Get the burning rubber smell. Well, what's your closing thoughts, overarching consensus on this? It's a nice F-150. I would say if I had to buy an F-150, it would be this one. Well, I wouldn't get the Platinum. I would get the Pro. I would get the Platinum. I, I would get the cheapest possible one because my favorite things about this are the drive comfort and the frunk, the storage space. All of those are still going to yeah, be on the they're cheapest They're going to be one. on the Pro. Right. All the little, I don't know, accents and the tailgate step, all that. I'm not going to. From what I can, from what I read about it, it's very hard to get a Pro. I believe it. They probably have very little profit on that one. They have no profit on this one, by the way. Right. <laughs> I don't think trucks need to be this big. I mean, I know people are used to it and comfortable with it. At the same dealer lot, what I really liked checking out are those Mavericks. Those Mavericks are such a nice size. Yeah, they're a nice size, but honestly, if you have to do work with a truck, you don't want that. That's true. I'm speaking as someone who yeah. doesn't have a truck. Like uh, my buddies <laughs> who throw everything in a truck, you can't believe how much they haul around. They wouldn't go for that Maverick, but they wouldn't go for this either. Because it's electric? The people I know, no, people I know all have eight foot beds. Oh yeah. I have an eight foot bed. You know, I think that might actually be an interesting, if, if Ford's not gonna try to deliver hundreds of thousands of these, they've scaled back production. I would say an extended bed, Lightning, whatever you call it, 250, 350, might be smarter because you can fit a ton more cells in it. I'm sure it's expensive, but if people are buying these things oh, for towing, extended bed with extended battery means better at towing, more payload, like you yeah, said. Yeah, absolutely. Lower volume production, because it's probably gonna be a big, profit loss but <laughs> they have to get rid of that 150 kw charging thing though oh that's true maybe they need to go to an 800 volt architecture i think so that's the next step because that if making a bigger battery does not please you when you get to the charging station no. <laughs> especially if it was 150 kilowatts and you have a 250 kilowatt hour pack that's not going to be a no it's trip. It, it's going to be a long charge i would argue this is the best f-150 to ever exist that's my EV bias talk. Thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. And thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.